Now, um, as I was mentioning, you can hook it up to the USB cable to your computer. Um, it's really not needed though, because one of the good things about this particular unit is it can, it's capable of taking your uh, standard SD memory cards. All right, there's a 512 megabyte. Take standard uh, cards. I'm not sure what the capacity goes up to. I don't think it takes the uh, high density uh, cards like 8, 16 gigabyte. I could be wrong on that though, so don't quote me, as so many people often do. Here is a uh, headphone jack right there. Um, your power switch right there. And the bottom is external output right there. I believe that is for, uh, it actually has a TV out cable. So if you're running your games or emulators or what have you on this unit, you can have uh, hook up a separately available cable and go straight to a uh, TV output there and uh, watch it on a bigger screen. So it's a cool option. Um, I have you know I have no need for it myself. Um, what else? Oh yes, the batteries. I would like to mention this. The good thing about it is it takes two standard AA rechargeables. The downside of course is it'll whip through those rechargeables in no time so I highly suggest um, you pick up some really high capacity rechargeables um, there are actually a GP32 brand that uh, again you could buy from the same company uh, they're rated at 2500 uh, MAH or MHA or whatever I I'm not an electronics guy <laughs> but uh, and they do pretty well if you if you get uh, two pairs of those batteries you know switch between them they'll keep you going for a while these are uh, Duracell uh, 2650 MAH batteries so they're even more powerful these will keep you going for for a while so um, so you want to get your high capacity rechargeables Plug them in there. Have your memory card in, and we're going to turn it on and I'm going to show you the boot sequence. There's the power. There we go. All right. Now, I believe I had flashed this to have, yes, the firmware, the 3.0 firmware. It originally came with the, uh, the 2.0, I believe. Here also is a, uh, there's a two little speakers on the side here. These are standard volume up and down. There's a select and start button uh, and uh, A, X, B, and Y buttons right there. And this is your standard uh, directional thumb pad. Now I'd like to point out uh, this is a pretty cool looking interface. It is however not um, what comes with it uh, generally. Uh, this is a skin. It, uh, it looks a little nicer than the uh, default interface. And again, being uh, Linux-based and uh, open to uh, development and homebrew, um, there's literally tons of skins and uh, interfaces for you to choose from. You need only apply them yourself. So, if we go through the menu and look at some of the features here. Okay, that's video, games, music, mp3 photo display there's your settings right there you can even get some help in a menu right there and uh, just excuse me a bit I am doing security on a lot here all right anyways <laughs> there's Explorer if you want to uh, look at either the contents of your SD card or the built-in NAND memory and also capability for reading ebooks. I never really use that much myself. This has been mostly for my use, of course, games, emulators, sometimes music and watching videos. So, the good thing about it is it's uh, DivX compatible right out of the box. Uh, more of a standard file format. Whereas with the PSP, you know, to play back uh, video from the memory card, I had to convert it and everything like that. It's nice to just download a DivX video and drop it right on the SD card. 
So I'm going into some of the settings here. You have a test mode. And it'll test all your different buttons and things. You know, battery, of course, is the uh, strength of your battery at any current time. USB, uh, you can turn on the USB functionality on and off. Same with your TV out functionality. We've got some credits here. Uh, system information, LCD, you can adjust uh, brightness and intensity. And info about your want to take a look at some info about the version of your firmware, the model of your specific GP2X, etc, etc. So that, uh, that's pretty much it really. Um, I, I don't have anything on the card right now to show you, but um, I just wanted to give you a brief uh, overview of this system, an alternative to your commercial offerings by Sony and Nintendo. And uh, don't get me wrong, I own each of those units also with uh, hacked firmwares and uh, things like that. But sometimes it's nice to just, uh, well, have a handheld that not everyone else has. It's a conversation piece. And uh, as I said, it is built with homebrew development in mind. So there's tons of emulators available. Um, it's a good all-round handheld. You know, the screen's not quite as brilliant or widescreen as a PSP but it is uh, bigger than a um, standard uh, Nintendo DS screen. So I think it is a little bigger. But uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. Just wanted to give you a look at a different handheld you may not have seen. And uh, check it out if you want to, uh, you know, watch movies, listen to music, play some games, run some emulators, and, uh, you know, just uh, have, have a handheld that's a little different something that not everybody would likely have and that's it that's the gp2x check it out order one online i'll include links and uh, more info in the comments section bye for now